All right, welcome back to the channel. Today uh, we're gonna do something a little different. It's a uh, guitar modification today. Um, so this is my 2010 Fender American Deluxe Stratocaster with N3 noiseless pickups and the uh, S1 switching system. Um, these are the standard pickups of this guitar. I've had this car, guitar for, I don't know, five or six years now. Um, I bought it used for right around a thousand um, and I really like it, but, uh, you know, the, the N3 noiseless pickups, I think I've been hit or miss on. Sometimes I like them. Sometimes I don't, I don't think they're strat enough. That is, they're not chimey enough and they're not enough quacky enough in the in between positions. Um, there are some cool, um, configurations and sounds of the N3 noiseless switching system for Fender. Um, but I thought we would upgrade the pickups or at least attempt an upgrade of the pickups. Uh, today using what I have that just came in the mail although we should thank FedEx for being a day late which is uh, the Fishman uh, single width uh, noiseless fluence uh, Stratocaster pickups um, these are active um, they require a battery one of the misnomers is that you have to put in a rechargeable battery inside the guitar. That is not true. You can run these with 9 volt. But the nice thing is, that in fact, the, um, the rechargeable battery actually for this set actually comes in the form of a, of a back plate that you can uh, put on the back of the guitar instead. So this guitar has um, my tortoise shell normal back plate. Um, the only downside, I guess, is that this is just white, but otherwise that would be your replacement. This is your lithium ion battery. So uh, in the event that your lithium ion battery in the future goes uh, dead, this is a very easy replacement. Um, the only possible downside is if your lithium ion battery decides to go rogue, uh, you potentially set your guitar and house on fire, but that's sort of a general problem with any lithium ion battery. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm not going to blame that on the guitar. So this is probably a relatively um, minor uh, concern. Uh, maybe not too minor, but I, you know, I, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, again, the recharge time on the battery, I think it takes about three hours to charge and you get a couple hundred hours of playing time, like 250 to 300 hours of playing time. What this really means in terms of the rechargeable battery is this thing is going to probably last for a long time, at least 10 years or longer. I mean, that's just because the number of times that you fully discharge and recharge the battery is maybe twice a year at most, two, three times a year. It's not like a cell phone where you're constantly, almost every day, running your battery down and charging at night. So um, you wouldn't expect this battery to, to, to die um, too quickly. So if you're interested, uh, I'm going to uh, remove the pick guard and uh, show the installation of the Fishman Fluence pickups and then after we're done if we get it working we'll do some sound demos. Alright so uh, here we are I have the uh, strings off the pick guard opened um, and I removed the uh, output jack from the uh, from the cup uh, holder or the whatever you want to call this thing um, Fishman's gonna have a new one. I think it's a three terminal uh, device. Has to do with the battery. Um, now we just need to sort of wholesale remove the pickups from the pick guard um, and the pots. All the pots, the pick guard, the switch stays. Need to desolder the um, uh, existing wiring to some extent. Um, before you would go about doing this, it's probably a good idea to take pictures, although you can probably find um, the Fender N3 uh, wiring diagrams on the internet if you wanted to return the guitar to stock. Um, but uh, yeah, this should be relatively easy. It's just uh, desoldering a little bit here. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, get going on that. And we'll want to retain the, the ground wires, these black ground wires. We're going to want to desolder them from these pots. I uh, don't know if we need all this much wire, but uh, we'll... Uh, We'll hold on to these two. I guess they're on the same ground. So let me get my soldering iron. Uh, I got one of these sort of nearly instant on um, 
what do you call this thing? Uh, TS100 uh, soldering irons recently. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's done a good job so far. So uh, yeah, let's get going. Okay, so yeah, now the pick guard should be fully removable from the guitar. So I'm going to put the guitar aside here. Uh, we'll bring that back in a minute when we actually need it again. Now it's going to be a little bit easier to solder. I can see more of it. Let me try to adjust the camera a bit here. Sorry about that. So yeah, now just a couple of wires here and there. this over and uh, take off the pots. Yeah, I don't think we need uh, this side of the switch with all these multiple terminals. I'm not sure what this does in the N3. I think it allows for more complex pickup configurations. We really just need um, this side of the switch with the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The far side towards me is sort of more the normal switch configuration, and the back side has uh, one, two, three, four, one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten terminals uh, for all your pickup combinations. But uh, yeah, I don't have another switch, so uh, we're going to stick with this and. Uh, We'll wire up the fluence pickups. Uh, so we'll get the fluence pickup box out. It'll come in a nice tray like this. They've got an uh, installation guide. We will be referring to this. System requirements and other materials that can be thrown aside. We've got uh, We've got our pot, which is our push-pull pot. This is for the second voice of the Fishman Fluence pickup. Uh, so that is, I believe, supposed to be the tone pot or the rear tone pot. Uh, and then we have a Fishman Fluence or a Fishman potentiometer. Feels okay. Another Fishman potentiometer. So one of these will be volume and one of these will be tone. I believe, and uh, yeah, then the output jack. So the output jack, like I said, is a three terminal, and actually there's two prongs. This is actually pretty nice. That's actually kind of an upgrade, to be quite honest. Um, so I guess step one, uh, eh, I guess we'll solder it before we put it into the jack. Uh, step one, I guess, will be, uh, Inserting the pots into the pick guard. Operation. Oh, that's no good. We need the installation guide. Here's the installation guide. So there you have it. Uh, we've got the pots installed. Like I said, the terminals face away from the pickups for the regular uh, pots. And this pot, which is the push-pull for getting the second voice of the Fishman Fluence. Uh, that second voice is like a Texas uh, special kind of voiced uh, strat. Uh, these terminals face inwards towards this pot, to your other, your other tone pot. Uh, and then next we uh, 
uh, install the pickups and uh, there's uh, three pickups in the set obviously for Strat. Uh, two of them are supposed to be identical uh, in terms of electronically and these are the ones that uh, have only black and white wires so these are really more passive. Um, all the electronics that control the whole entire set are actually located in the uh, bridge pickup. So you can grab any one of these two. This will be the neck. Uh, although the neck and middle pickup are uh, supposed to be tonally identical. And that is construction wise, they're the same pickup. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, do that. And the last pickup to install here in the uh, pick guard before we start doing the soldering and the wiring and the complicated part is the uh, is the bridge pickup. It's the uh, brain of the entire thing, or I should say it's really the, where the preamp exists. I believe these are all analog too. Um, man, you know, that's kind of scary. As you can see here's the, here's the pickup. You can see lots of wires coming off of different colors. Um, and they've kind of hidden the electronics under this uh, Back, back plate uh, of the pickup. Under here is where all the signals and the preamp and all that stuff for making the, the pickups go hum. I guess these pickups don't go hum, but you know, you know what I mean. So yeah, this is maybe one of the more complicated parts of the install. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different wires. One of them is going to go unused. Uh, I believe it's the blue. It's called the uh, HF something option and it has to do with uh, if you if you typically use lots of cable with lots of capacitance it kind of does some kind of tone suck thing that you know honestly I don't really uh, think is all that useful uh, I don't want tone suck maybe I'm getting that wrong I don't know <laughs> but there's a there's a wire that we're just gonna probably clip short and um, and uh, yeah, just uh, uh, heat shrink tube up to make sure that it doesn't uh, accidentally ground itself. I guess that's how you actually turn the thing on. You get the blue wire to ground itself. If there was another switch, we could actually make it a switchable option. Um, but that would require putting a hole in the pick guard and getting like a toggle switch. And I don't really feel like doing that. Okay, so that should be the uh, top side of the pit guard already. Uh, so you can see how it looks. Like I said, uh, it's off white. It's not going to be the same color as this cream. This fender cream has had 10 years to age. It's a little more yellow maybe than when it started. So it won't be a perfect match, but uh, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's okay. It's not, it's not white white, so it won't look too terrible. Um, but it will be noticeably a different color than the knobs. And in fact, I don't believe my volume knob is going to work at all. Uh, because it's got that, uh, it's got that uh, different uh, thingamabobber in the middle here. Yeah, the, this part of the, uh, I'd have to break that off if I wanted to make that work. So yeah, we're going to have to go get a volume knob. We're going to have to go get a set of knobs. There you go. Well, maybe we can go find a, a set of knobs with a slightly different color and get it to match better. So yeah, this uh, looks like we're going to need to go buy a set of knobs at some point. What I was saying is uh, the easiest place to start on the install is on the, on the neck and the bridge because these are just standard black and white. One goes to a ground point on the pot. We'll be making that ground point. Uh, and one will go to uh, the switch terminal. And as I sort of alluded to before, uh, you don't need to be a wizard to figure out how this works. 
Um, if you can read a diagram, you can more or less uh, figure, uh, figure it out. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the, uh, yeah, so from the, like I said, here's the picture and, uh, if you follow the black from the neck in the middle, you'll see they just go to the, uh, this pot here closest to the, um, closest to this pickup and we make a solder, we make a solder, uh, ground there. So. What I like to do is scratch up the pot. Um, so what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll grab these two wires, probably clip their length a bit. They don't need to be this long, obviously, to be making that ground. That's probably okay. What I like to do, like I said, is uh, scratch up uh, the pot. Okay, so if we scratch up the pot a little bit, it helps. It can help that solder stick. It's probably one of the number one tips for trying to solder uh, onto the case of a, of a pot, is to make sure that you scratch up the surface. Number one, it helps clean it, and number two, it helps uh, just put some grooves in there. In fact, that may be polished too much. So, you know, you can take something like this and really make some grooves. And that's just the uh, groove side of these hemostats. So now it's cleaned and grooved. We got our wires effectively of the right length. Uh, we're gonna have to find some solder too, I guess, cause uh, I don't immediately see it out here, but uh, yeah, we can uh, go grab that real quick. Twist these guys together. That is in case we need to do any more uh, accidental desoldering. We got our soldering iron, it's still at 400. So there, the wires, you know, aren't strained in any, any, in any sense. There's a little bit of slack on those. And then the two, uh, the two white wires now. Now these go to the switch. Um, now we gotta really start paying attention. Uh, if you want your uh, pickup wired as uh, you would normally expect. So it looks like the, um, it looks like the neck goes to effectively the far end here and the middle uh, should go to the next one over so these two terminals here this should be the uh, if you can zoom in on this one we're going to raise the switch this way i guess we can't see it too well hold it up so this will be the uh, neck middle bridge and this is what we would call the common. And then the common on this side would normally be hooked together uh, and then go to the output uh, or to the volume pot. But uh, in the Fluent system, it works a little bit differently because all of the signals need to go into the preamp. So the neck can come here. We can come underneath the switch. Pretty much. Um, and at this point, this thing would be wired pretty much um, such that we only get neck, middle, or uh, neck, 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 and middle, 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 and bridge, uh, and then bridge only. That is how the five way switch works. This common terminal normally would be linked up over here to do the tone 
uh, options for all the signals. Uh, and then that would then go to sort of the volume pot and all that other kind of stuff. In the fluence pickup, we need to be able to send these signals to the preamp um, before uh, they go out to the rest of everything else. And so that's this far yellow wire, at least according to this diagram. This diagram, of course, is not... Uh, of course, it's not uh, colored. Uh, it's in black and white, but you just count over. So this yellow one is actually going to the common terminal right here. Now we have neck, middle, and bridge wired through the switch. The switch common goes into the fluence. The fluence will then preamp that. And uh, we need to then essentially find the wire on the fluence that... Uh, excuse me, uh, goes to the other common uh, terminal. And that is uh, actually going to go through uh, the pot and to the switch. So the uh, terminal that is uh, closest to the switch is where we want to bring, and let's figure out which wire that is, that wire, uh, is the one, two, third wire over from this side. So it's the one after the blue, it's the orange. So this orange wire is going to connect to the other side of the five-way common. I would call it on the tone side of that switch. That's where we normally do the tone stuff. I go right here. So I'm gonna cut that to length. good so now we have the output of the preamp going to the volume pot um, to be reduced eventually the volume pot obviously will um, make its way out to the output jack we'll see that in a little bit uh, and then the next thing to do is really this is the decision point as to how the tone knobs are going to work um, we need to wire uh, put some wire between um, the the tone knobs fishman does supply some uh wire and a battery snap if you wanted to be so inclined to install a nine volt battery solution like i said i bought the uh the lithium ion battery uh, there's a green wire these can just be white i think oh, oh they even give a look at that that's really nice i have to say oh and they even get a heat shrink tube oh man they even provide heat shrink tubing I thought I was going to get my own. I have some. Uh, they even supply a spare uh, lock washer and nut just in case you lose one or do something to it, I guess. And a capacitor for the tone. Uh, we'll do that in a second. I guess we're working on the tone knobs. So we can, uh, we can do the capacitor on the tone knobs. If we get a, a look, um, there, are, there are lugs here which are actually on the switch. And there are lugs on the bottom, which are actually the pot lugs. And we need to go to the middle lug of this normal potentiometer, the one that I'm not touching, <laughs> the one that's kind of in focus, and to the middle lug on the very bottom. Uh, and that's where you would put the capacitor. And this is a non-polarized capacitor. Uh, I think this is tantalum. I'm not sure. I can't remember if this is tantalum or not. It's one of these orangey thing, orangey squarey. Like I said, the or reddish orangish squarey capacitor, uh, whatever the hell that is, it's not paying attention. There you go. There's your uh, first lesson of the day. Actually, pay attention to the diagram. So, this actually goes to the very outside terminal. Uh, on the side closest to this edge of the pit guard. And now the uh, the tone wire. So one of them has to go to the middle terminal of the regular tone pot. Uh, and this would be uh, the tone pot for the neck pickup uh, in a traditional in a traditional strat wiring. And this then needs to go to the to the neck pickup side of the tone switch, which uh, if I remember right, 
is still in the same orientation, so it should be on the second one. Let me just verify that on the diagram. I am correct. So it's the one right after this orange one here. We just uh, do that sort of like one to one. So neck, neck, middle, middle, bridge, bridge. And again, we run the same kind of deal, uh, this time to the middle lug. If we wanted to have the uh, bridge pickup also on the um, town side, I believe we would just run a jumper between these two, um, between the bridge and the middle lugs on the town side of the switch. Um, I'm not going to do that, I guess, uh, right now. I'm just going to run it very classic strat style. switch I believe we're uh, we should be 100% done with the switch wiring um, the only thing to really do now is um, um, there's some wiring to do um, a little bit of ground wiring we need to run uh, on the switch which is fine uh, and the gray wire, this is the wire I'm looking for. This is the wire that really is the voicing wire. Um, it's the one closest to me or the one that's, that's going to be facing all the electronics, all the pots and stuff. Uh, this one goes to one of the terminals of the push pulse switch. Um, I think I understand what they mean. I'm going to say it's one of the bottom terminals, and I don't think it matters which one, but according to them, it should be this lowest one here. So we'll leave this wire a little bit longer than maybe necessary in case we have to move it. I don't think it matters because it's just about lifting ground or not ground. I guess the last thing is to run some ground wire. Now, Fishman sort of suggests running um, bare, uh, a bare wire in a couple of places. I don't like to run um, uninsulated wire uh, very far um, for a variety of reasons. Uh, so what I'm going to do is... Uh, cut some of this green wire and make a couple of, uh, uh, of runs here. good on everything. Uh, the last one is this uh, bridge pickup uh, black wire needs to go to a ground. It shouldn't matter which ground you go to. They recommend making it short and going to the volume pot so we will follow their instructions. And again, we can more or less reuse the same solder area that we've grounded everything to. Um, some people say this is actually better to do to have one common ground. I don't think in this application for guitar stuff it matters too much. Some people would argue the exact opposite, the saying that you should have separate ground points. Um, like I said, they're all electrically the same potential okay we are back we have the guitar again uh just an interesting tidbit of history this 2010 model american deluxe strat it turns out 
there it's the same body as a jump back uh, strat and so the uh, the neck pickup route here um, is actually stamped back and there's a sticker in here that says body J back uh, uh, I guess this is Olympic uh, white uh, so yeah they were using the same body for the American Deluxe as the Jeff Beck Strat. Um, as I was sort of in indicating, the the real next step is wiring the battery um, is wiring the battery pack up through the existing holes to allow us to wire the battery to where it needs to go. So um, two of these things, the white and the black need to go to the um, need to go to the output jack. Oh, and the white is like the um, battery switch, if you will. This is for making sure the battery is not um, discharging uh, uh, when you're when you're not plugged in. That is, when you're plugged in, the whole system is active. When you unplug it this stops the battery from draining so it's just like any other um any other uh system really and then the red is going to go to the to the pick guard so we kind of need to get these wires in here like this and this wire needs to go through one of these holes here i don't know if this is big enough it is not so Instead of unwinding these things first, I should, uh, should have kept them wound up, but that's okay. We will, well, we will eventually get our plate on the right direction. Uh, one nice thing is that the, uh, the cutout for the strings is very big, so uh, having to take this off to get your uh, strings in and out for restringing should never be an should never be an issue. And it looks like we're gonna have to charge the battery. In fact, what I'm gonna do at this point is uh, put the screws back in here. Yeah, and so this will be interesting. This is definitely a raised back plate. It's probably about as thin as they can make it and get the battery in. And whatever associated electronics for charge and recharge of the battery. Um, we'll see how it makes for uh, the comfort of playing the guitar. I don't know if it's going to have a big impact or not. It's funny, they say this uh, battery should have professional installation for fear of puncture, but like, honestly, this battery is designed to be super consumer grade, such that the install can be done by any moron, including myself. So, yeah, I don't know, maybe Fishman is shooting themselves in the foot a little bit. Maybe they have to put that warning on there because some idiot's gonna get a friggin' nail and a hammer and see what happens when you puncture a lithium ion battery or their hole spacing won't be exact here. Get the drill to slip. <laughs> Let the uh, 4th of July fireworks happen when you discharge, when you uh, watch a lithium ion battery uh, find its lowest energy state uh, thermodynamically. All right, so that's the uh, ground plate installed uh, this camera angle sucks we gotta tip this up a bit there we go uh, that's the ground plate or the the battery plate installed like i said it's raised up a fair bit on the back that may actually make the guitar a little uncomfortable to play we'll see um that's pretty much that as I was saying, we need a, uh, yeah, so definitely a warning. Do not untwist these until you put it through the body like that. The pick guard, so the, the, these two black wires will go to 
a ground point somewhere. Uh, this red wire will connect to this red wire. I don't know if that's in shot. This video is going to be terrible. It's going to like get the worst view. Actually, you know what? This video is going to be terrible quality and it's going to get the most views on YouTube that I've done of anything. Guarantee it. Let's see. Can we get a better shot? There we go. That's a little bit better. I don't know if you can see anything or not. Or whether I've uh, scorched my guitar with a soldering iron. So again, the red here from the bridge pickup will go to the red. And Ah, uh, there we go. Plenty. Plenty of wire. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's a bit shorter than I wanted. But, uh... Although, you know what? We got plenty of here. We can just unwrap some more. On the battery. We need to run, we need to run a wire from the, from the middle terminal of the volume pot out. Uh, so let's uh, reconsult the, uh, yeah, you can see there's a wire that goes to the tip connection of the output jack. And uh, I almost forgot to do that. So again, don't do as I do. Don't uh, don't strip with your wire cutters. Uh, oh wait, I should probably look at the uh, diagram from the. Uh, battery compartment for the uh, backplate battery uh, one of the ground wires oh did we hmm that's a good question did I uh, is there gonna be so the bridge ground goes there the sleeve ground From the wire, Ooh, I, see, I, I probably forgot that part. Honestly, already, I probably did. Yeah, in fact, the, uh, I did kind of. I should run. I should run the black here to a ground point on the pot and then run it to the ground point on the, yeah. This needs to be a ground point on the pot here like this. And then we need to run a length of wire from the pot over uh, that is correct. See, this is why we don't screw down the uh, pick guard at this point. We well, just need another length of wire, I guess. Ah, here we go. Well, the spare is probably good enough. So this can go through. <laughs> Make sure you use, oh, we're going to go on the other side of this uh, running ground wire. Make sure you use plenty of solder because this is kind of your mechanical connection. We'll finish here. So, yeah, now um, this black that is coming from one of the pots ground is going to go on uh, the sleeve which should be the middle terminal
and then uh, yeah, I probably need to get a damp cloth and clean this guitar up a bit. Charge this guitar for you know at least ten or fifteen minutes to verify that pickups work, and then we'll restring it. All right, I'll uh, catch you when I'm back. There it is on the guitar stand charging. Uh, this is in my living room. See the setup? There's a very long USB cable here that goes to the power strip. I just tuck that away when I'm not using it, as I sort of said. Uh, having to recharge uh, the Fishman Fluence shouldn't be very often. Um, but yeah, the red light being on says it's charging, so that's a good sign that everything went well. Uh, if the battery doesn't blow up and set my house on fire, uh, you'll probably see evidence of that uh, because the video will be posted. If my house is on fire, well then you won't see this video. All right, so uh, it's been a success. We uh, have the Fishman Fluence installed into the uh, American Deluxe Strat, I can say, uh, safely at this point. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Just put new strings on, did a little bit of pickup height adjustment. They're pretty hot, uh, so you don't really need the pickups all that, uh, all that close to the strings. I would say they're probably a little bit further back than I normally would have a Strat. Um, overall, I think they sound pretty good. Um, it's really nice having the push-pull. Yeah, so yeah, it just it just kind of kicks it up a notch uh, in terms of oomph with the push pull. So yeah, let's uh, get a shot at the uh, get the guitar. You don't need to stare at my ugly face for uh, the playing demo. And uh, yeah, let's see if we can't uh, record some of this. Uh, are we ready to record in Reaper? Are we ready to record in Reaper? I think we are. All right, so here we go. This is the uh, neck pickup, voice one. <laughs> Neck and middle, probably one of my favorite positions on a Strat. Yeah, so it sounds pretty good. I don't think it's as quacky as uh, my custom shop Strat uh, in the middle positions. That may be a little bit of a pickup height fine tuning to find that. Um, but you know, in the 10 minutes that I've had it uh, going, it's okay. So this is middle only. Another, uh, another unappreciated uh, tone of the Strat is simply the middle pickup by itself. Now middle and bridge, or actually known as position two. The most quacky, supposedly, of all the Strat sounds. Okay, not too bad. That's definitely a little more quacky, I think, than uh, position four. And the bridge. Now this is a uh, bridge, no tone, no, no tone knob. So the back tone knob does not affect... As I said, you can wire that in. You can jumper the the bridge to the to the middle tone knob, but and the one thing I'll say immediately is uh, these things have clarity like no other. I mean. They make those N3 pickups really just sound like mud, to be to be quite to be honest. These uh these are impressive. So let's do a voice two here. Uh, yeah, let's uh we'll start in the bridge in voice two. 
Oh, volume helps. <laughs> Position four, neck and bridge, or sorry, uh, middle and bridge. Uh, middle only. And now, uh, middle and uh, neck. And finally, my favorite position on a strat, uh, the neck position. That's the uh, upgrade to my American Deluxe uh, Stratocaster. I know this video is like, you know, five to 10 years uh, out of date. The Fishman Fluence have been out for quite a while. Uh, I sort of hesitated uh, uh, getting into them when they first came out. There were all the buzz and everyone talked about them. But uh, after hearing the P90s in my Gristle Master, I decided that I really wanted to upgrade this Strat. Uh, out of the N3 Fender Noiseless. The Noiseless was nice. The S1 switch was nice in terms of getting different pickup combinations and doing cool things. But at the end of the day, the, the, the voicing of the pickups is, was just not enough clarity, not enough brightness in, in my opinion. Um, so I really haven't played this guitar much in the past year or so. It really sat under the bed. I'm really glad I picked these up. I picked these up from, I think, Pro Audio Star all uh, annotate it correctly in the video they actually sold the pickup set and the uh and the battery uh, as a as a deal i think i got the whole thing for like 225 or something around there uh shipped to me uh, it took a little bit of time to get to me from the east coast but uh yeah aside from fedex giving me a one day delay and making my friday afternoon not as nice my uh saturday has been excellent so yeah uh Anyway, uh, if you like the content, hit like or subscribe. And if you don't, as always, leave me nasty comments and tell me how much I suck. All right, take care.